Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about curb waste? Like you're, I know you have a business in the waste industry yeah. and then now curb waste is like a software solution for the waste industry. But yeah, just tell us about, you know, what your business is, um, you know, the, the business that you're selling ultimately also. Yeah. yeah. Cool to kind of hear your journey. Yeah. The story is a little, uh, I guess is a little unique. Um, you know, I've been working in the waste industry for like 10 years, let's say mm -hmm. about, uh, started at like a, a, a transfer facility which is basically like where they bring material and they sort it and then eventually goes to like an end user. Um, that was supposed to be something that was kind of like, a, you know, you don't really know what you want to do with your life. So yeah. you kind of just like jump into something and temporary and then figure it out. Um, and so I learned the business there. And during that time, what was supposed to be like a six month thing ended up being like a four year thing. Um, did you and, do that? Sir? Did, did you do that right out of college? No. You... So, so I, um, I had played baseball and then, and then after that I was working in, uh, in media and like, you know, again, I, I dedicated my life to baseball basically. So, you know, when you dedicate yourself to something and then you don't really think about what's going to happen after that. Yeah. So I just never, ever thought about like what my career journey would be. I just yeah. thought like, this is what I'm going to do. Let me just try to figure this out. Um, and I went as far as I could. And then after that, I, I got a job. A buddy of mine had worked at Mindshare and was like, hey, you know, I'll get you an interview. Um, I was an assistant media buyer, you know, and um, it was it just wasn't the corporate thing just wasn't really what I wanted to do. I kind of learned that pretty uh, early. And so I, I just decided, hey, let's let's my, my family had owned uh, a transfer station. So I was like, let me just get a job there for the time being. It was close to where I was living. So I say pretty convenient. And that was where I learned the business. And, um, you know, you do a lot in a transfer station. It's like, a, you know, you have obviously office work, but you also are kind of out there and, and learning about materials and learning about trucks and where the materials come from and like how waste is generated and all this stuff. Um, and so it was it was fun and it was it was tangible. Mm -hmm. You know, you're actually like operating like things that matter. Yeah. Um, and so from there, I uh, started. Um, Curbways, uh, curbside, which is our waste company. Um, and we did that in New York. It was basically like a construction demolition roll off company providing dumpsters. Um, and that was where we really started to understand the needs of the industry itself. And so we built a technology platform that we ran the business on. And, and that like was very iterative. It was kind of like, started out as just like this like form that we would take orders in digitally mm -hmm. and then it kind of expanded out and just started doing more and more things um and as the business grew the product grew because yeah. we were just reinvesting yeah. in our in our business so um that's pretty much how like the tech play happened um and then once COVID happened the city shut down yeah right so we lost about three months of revenue okay and so i was thinking to myself well we have to work from home. We're in a very good situation because we have a system that allows us to do so. Yep. Um, we can keep everybody safe and we don't necessarily have to be at the job. Um, drivers are working with tablets so they can kind of do their thing. There's not a lot of intermingling. Maybe other companies want this too. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just started to reach out to my network and I was like, hey, you know, would you want to use a system like this? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, definitely. And I think the need increase because of you know the uncertainty of what was happening yeah yeah for um, sure. and so we just decided to basically re-architect it to be a SaaS product um because it was built proprietary so you don't really have all those different components in place yeah. at that time um so we spent most of 2020 just like doing that um and then we branded it and we created curb waste and now we're here today so this is pretty much how it happened it's not you know it i think a lot of people that start waste companies you know, it's not front of mind technology, right? Yeah. The number one priority of every waste company in the in the world is pick up the garbage, right? Yeah. That's the number one thing they have to do. And so most of the focus goes into that. Um, and I would say from my perspective was, well, you know, I'm a regular user of tech. Mm -hmm. You use it every single day. You know the value it can bring. Um, how can we best formulate it into this, into this market? Um, and so when I started to learn the industry, you start to learn the real problems, right? Like all great yeah. products solve problems. And so I was kind of living those problems and just like jotting them down and thinking about, okay, you know, this could do this. And you start like trying to find solutions for it in the market. And at that point, when we started curbside, I had demoed every product there was, okay. right? Like I just started going out because I thought, whatever, we're just going to demo products and we're going to use one of those products. Yeah. And I found that 
everything did something well, but it didn't do everything well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when you're building, when your intention, and which our intention was to build this you know, like large waste company in New York, um, you know, you want to be able to grow with it. Yeah. You don't want to just be limited into what its capabilities are. Yeah. Um, and so that was where I was like, you know what, we'll just build our own. Like it will start small and yeah. we understood that, but let's just, every profit we make, let's just reinvest in that idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what we did for like five years. I mean, it was Got really it. kind of just like this evolution. Yeah. We made a lot of mistakes, but there was a lot of evolution yeah. in that tech product. How does one go from like, you know, looking at waste in this, in this way that you're, that you're looking at it from your lens, right? Of like, yeah. Well, we could use tech to solve these problems. You know, like I'm, I'm, I guess, what are the existing methods or before curb waste or in terms of like, let's say another, another kind of like waste company, similar size as the ones that you guys have on curbside, yeah. but like, or even like larger than that, what are they doing or what have they historically done to, um, accommodate or like, I guess maybe, I don't know if, do, do they ever look at like trying to optimize things or better efficiency or is it really just like, how do they scale or how do they grow? Yeah, I think so. Like I said before, I mean, I think most startup waste companies are going to think about it from the lens of the amount of trucks they have, containers they have, the labor force, how many clients do we have, right? Yeah. That's how they're going to kind of focus most of their efforts. And, and what happens there is that typically, if you're not really uh, tech informed, like, and understand that value, then you're just, you're really going to ignore it. You're, you're kind of just going to grunt, you know, work your yeah. way through so you it. you just accept that and you just pain yeah. points is that's part of the That's business. part of it. And okay. so I think culturally speaking, that's what you find a lot of the time. Um, and, and we kind of create this, this denomination of waste companies as you have like your, your, what we consider like a mom and pop, a small business. So those individuals are are just kind of like putting themselves out there They're, and and the waste industry as a whole is a very it's risky in the sense that it's very capital you know intensive mm -hmm. so you know you're taking out loans you're doing all these things mm -hmm. so you're really just focused on we need to get the customers we need to get the trucks working we need to get mm -hmm. you know the containers out we got to get the turnover so um i think that's a lot of the core focus as those businesses start to grow and they kind of fall more into that like mid-size like a small business uh, mid-sized business, enterprise, mid-enterprise. Um, then they start to consider other things, right? Now you're talking about, well, we have the customers, we have the assets, we built the, the revenues are good. What are we going to do to create efficiencies? Mm -hmm. And that's where tech will typically plug itself in. It. Um, and then as those businesses get bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually either, you know, become what I would consider enterprise. Now it's really like, okay, we've maybe outgrown this system. Now we need to go into the big system. Yeah. So, you know, I like to use a comparison of like, you have your small business that uses one CRM and then yeah. they grow and then they get to the bigger CRM. Yeah, yeah. It's a similar kind of thing. Got it. Um, but what we think from a value perspective and what I found is you should have tech from the very beginning yeah. because understanding those efficiencies in the earlier on is going to make you more, is going to benefit you as you grow yeah. because you can make better decisions with your money. Yeah. And that's ultimately what you want to do. If yeah. it's a CapEx heavy business, you need to be able to make better decisions with your money. Yeah. And so um, that I think is where tech really provides value. So that's what we've been trying to educate people on. Just be like, hey, don't be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. It's going to help you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really where we're at, at least in the industry side. And is there like, I mean, I found it's kind of like easier to go in when you're displacing maybe like a legacy system or, yeah. or if it's like super fragmented, then they have a certain understanding of it. Yeah. Is yeah. that, I mean, when you say, when you look at kind of like there's just the waste management industry as a whole, are they on technology or are they kind of like, in a place where they don't they don't really know what's broken they don't try to fix it at all and they just kind of like go through the manual um because i found that those are like a little bit that's harder to upsell or just sell into yeah. because like the tech learning curve is steeper right yeah. um and just like trying to get them familiarized with any kind of lingo is like really challenging but if there's something where it's like oh this is 20 years old and we've been using this for decades yeah. but now here's another version that's like the 2021 version. I don't know. Is yeah, that, is that I, kind of I like think, what you've seen or is it? Um, I think, yeah. I mean, I think what I was actually surprised to see as many companies as I have that have tech products. Okay. Um, so I actually don't think, I think if you asked me the same question 10 years ago, it might yeah. be a different conversation. But, really? Okay. But I think now there's definitely, they're understanding value. Now the value is kind of limited to certain, you know, very specific problem statements like, 
like taking orders or billing or dispatch, right? Those are the big three. Um, I think what's happening now is we're starting to see an evolution where the cons- their clients are changing, mm. right? So maybe before the, you, you would be out of sight, out of mind, and you just want your garbage picked up. Now people are looking for information about their garbage, yeah. where it's going, what are you doing that makes with sense. it? And so now that's forcing the hauler to evolve with its, with its yeah. client base. So the consumer wants more visibility. Oh yeah, 100%. And that's forcing now yeah. these-, these- It's kind of like with your, with your like electricity, right? Like yeah. sometimes they send you those reports and they're like, yeah. oh, you're doing a great job. You're doing this compared to all your neighbors. Yeah. That's what's kind of happening in the waste stream too. And I think that also kind of makes sense because waste, in my opinion, was always a utility. Yeah. And a lot of people don't view it that way, but it actually is. It's a fundamental part of our life yep. and our health. And so um, I think people are starting, uh, like, you know, people our age and, and younger are buying homes, yep. they're opening businesses, they're now becoming leadership positions. And this is what they want. They yep. want to understand they're more socially what's conscious. Going. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So when they're, when it's, it's forcing the haulers and the facilities to start to kind of uh, solve that issue and yeah. be like, okay, how do we get this to them? That's super interesting. I mean, it's it's really interesting to me when you kind of, when you're like starting to think about it in like a socially conscious perspective, where you know it's like, yeah, global warming is real, and you have a lot of these initiatives talking about the real life impact of what we're doing and how it influences or or, or changes the environment. And then yeah. now it's like trickling down to where now the consumer is in power to kind of like state these demands, state what they're looking for, and then changes the infrastructure of how things are done. And they're also used to it, right? Like, yeah. like, like we've grown up in a way that we can see everything in, in full transparency exactly, yeah. at the click of a button. So if you're gonna tell people like, yeah, we're gonna provide you a service of your business or your house or something, the, it's almost like just the expectation. Yep. They don't even think twice about it. And when you don't have it, then all of a sudden it's like, well, why don't you have it? Yeah. And that can help make a decision you know, for, for someone using one hauler versus another. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, we want to empower the hauler to have those capabilities so that they don't lose the business. Um, I'm a hauler first technology second. Yeah. I really, I understand how hard it is. So it's such a difficult job that just layering these things in, it it makes people be like, well, why, you know, we're already doing so much. Why Mm -hmm. do we have to do more? Um, and I think software allows that to just be a little bit easier for them to maintain. Do you, when you go into one of these like pitches or one of these conversations, right, with like when you're demoing a product, you know, are you leading with, uh, are you leading with like how this is going to make their lives easier? Or are you leading with like, this is how you can help grow your business? <laughs> we're, we're learning it. Yeah. Uh, we're learning what works and what doesn't, honestly, from just the sales side, you know. Um, but I think I usually, my format is tell me what your problems are. Like, what are, what are, what are the issues that you run into on a day to day basis? And that can be, something along the lines of some people have, you know, just transparency issues, what's mm-hmm. actually happening in my business. Some people have, you know, uh, we'll get a lot like I have to stay yeah. up all night to bill my customers because, you know, I'm on the truck all day yeah. or, or we, we're, we're operating all day. Um, so whatever that problem that they tell us is that they're trying to solve, because if they're on the demo, there's a reason. Yeah. They're, they're trying to figure something out. Yeah. Um, we want to curate the demo to make sure that we're targeting that and being as specific as we can in that while also showing them all the added value that we can bring. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think that's the way we kind of perceive it. It doesn't necessarily always go that way. Yeah. Sometimes they're just like, just show it to me. <laughs> you know, I want to see everything. Um, and that just changes the dynamic a little bit. Yeah. What, is, what is the typical day in the life of a hauler? Oh man, that's a, that is a loaded and heavy question. Um, <laughs> I can only imagine, right? Like I'm just thinking about this and I try to like visibly like have a vis- visual in my head yeah, of like man. what happens and what the process is like, right? So, you know, like I take out, let's just say I, I have a bunch of waste that I need picked up, right? right? And I've categorized my waste as a consumer. And then what happens from there? The life of a hauler depends on who, how big the company is and, and kind of like where they're operating out of. I would guarantee, I could speak to the New York haulers because I, haulers, because I know them very well. Um, it It's a grind. It's a grind because what people, I think what people don't really understand is how many voices are in the room when it comes to running a waste company. You have obviously all your operational elements. You're dealing with office staff, you're dealing with drivers, you're dealing with mechanics, you're dealing with, you know, all that day-to-day minutia of getting the job done. And it's also a heavy duty industry. So things break constantly. 
Mm -hmm. So now you're dealing with all the different vendors, all the different parts, all the different, like if a truck breaks down in the middle of the highway, how do you handle that? Yeah. You know, you have to know all these different layers of, of what can happen. And that's true, I think, across every single waste company in the world. You know, they're going to be dealing with those situations. You're dealing with new technologies, new trucks, you know, trucks have computers where they used to be mechanical. Mm. So you have all these different areas that people have to have. And now with, you know, with EVs and stuff, it's even just adding an additional layer. Um, the other part of it is, is that the waste industry is highly regulated. So you're, you're dealing with regulatory bodies that have certain mandates. And like, for example, in New York, you know, you have all these different government bodies that, that license you and that monitor you, that kind of pay attention to what you're doing and how you're doing it. Um, then you can deal with local municipalities. So if you work in Long Island in the suburbs, you have to, every single town has their own rules and their own permitting. So that in and of itself is a full-time job that, yeah. to be maintained. So I, I, I sympathize with that struggle to run in a really efficient waste company. Um, and really like the tech product that we're building is just to make their life easier. Like that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. The, it's more mission focused than it is, you know, to build a SaaS product. It's like yeah. we want to make. I want to make their life easier. I want to bring value to what they do, and and I want to make sure that all the things that they're going through, that we have some kind of way of making that a little bit more simplistic. You need like any great idea, no matter what it is, no matter where it is, no matter whether it's business or just in general life. You have to have people that help execute that idea, mm -hmm. right? And so. Like you can't have every single person in your organization being like this dreamer yeah, and being this, so you need the execution aspect and you need the ideas and the vision aspect. And yeah. and when you can kind of create that symmetry and bring that together, then ultimately you have something that's gonna be effective. And yeah. so I think, you know, there's, and there's sometimes that like I understand where my flaws lie, where I maybe don't I should be focusing on something more than I am. And maybe it's just because I'm on to the next thing and, and, and that's not really productive. Yeah. Like, you know, just focus on where we are right now. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's really a balance. You got to kind of balance it. But I think ultimately, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and you get uncomfortable, it, you're kind of screwed. Like, you, you know, you really got to focus on, on, on trying to just put yourself out there and just move the needle every single day consistently forward to your point to create that new level of what comfortable actually is. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think, um, yeah, on that point, I feel like that's probably like the biggest takeaway I can say from this yeah, from this conversation and just from from what we were talking about the whole time uh is just keep pushing and your level of discomfort until it becomes comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably like a good piece of advice for anybody who's kind of like sitting on the couch or like sitting in their cubicle or whatever it might be, whatever their current environment is that they're like want to shake it up a little bit it's really just that it's just kind of push it a little bit get comfortable there and push it a little bit more yeah man it's just like it's like in fitness or working out like you just yeah. got to keep going it's going to yeah. suck in the beginning but yeah. you know ultimately you start to see those gains or you start yeah. to see you know your your time increase or whatever yeah. and then that that becomes the new barometer and then yeah. you just want to keep beating that yeah so you know you can't just it, staying stagnant gets you nowhere yeah so you just have to continue to push and and i think we just try to you know, I know you do it and I know I do it where I'm just trying to bring when you're bringing a product to the to the marketplace, you just want to you have to educate about what that product is. And then you have to kind of just keep improving it and keep making it better and keep making it better and keep making it better. So it's never stagnant. Yeah. And that's really what it comes down to. Mm -hmm.